be here. Hang on. No worries, mate. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for joining us, Tony, and uh, congratulations on the World Championship victory. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I was just me. saying to Andrew, uh, before you arrived, um, my partner and I, we follow motorbike racing, and we were, we were raving about how Valentino Rossi has been <laughs> kicking the young kids' asses at the age of 37. Now, um, you can go one better than that, can't you? With my age, you mean? Yeah. I'm a ripe young 42. 42. For the skin, though. Can't tell, can you? No. <laughs> well, absolutely. You're looking well there, mate. Hi, hey, Anthony. Uh, tell the us bed. about your your uh, your victory, your win, um, and how you won the title. Tell us, who, who were you up against? What sort of age were they? And, uh, and, and how did it go? The guy I fought for the world title, his name was Sandy Robb. He's uh, he was a three times ABA Scottish champion. He's a he's a solid pro. He is um, to me my remembrance he's a thirty five I think, thirty four, mm -hmm. rated in the top ten in Canada. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's a Scotsman. Maybe he lived there for some time. So it was a WBF world title, which is not one of the the main three. There's, there's three that we all that we're all well aware of: the IBF, WBA, WBC. This was what's known as a fringe world title, but nonetheless, he was worthy opponent to beat. He was a solid uh, individual. It was a, a fight over 12 rounds. So, if you bear this in mind, at the time I was living homeless. I was training for a fight without a base. I had a lot of pressures outside of the the fight game to deal with and contend with. Mm -hmm. But at the age of 42, I got in the ring for 12 hard rounds. The, the fight's going to be up today and for people to watch soon, quite quite soon as well. The footage to give evidence. It's always evidence-based, in my opinion, though. So the evidence will show that for 12 rounds, the fight was from beginning to end was, was at a relentless pace. So if you bear that in mind, 42 years of age, living homeless, dealing with a lot of pressure outside the ring, was able to get in the ring on fight night. And, and perform like a, an athlete of 20 years of age. Now, besides my intensive training program, my coach, my friend Harden, who's a, a fantastic coach, who guided me towards that world title, I also had the benefits of health and the benefits of inclined bed therapy. Therapy, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> inclined bed therapy. And, and what will also be noticed by people if they do want to watch the fight is that for 12 rounds, I didn't sit down once. Do you understand what I mean by that, Jason? Yeah, yeah. When you're in the, in the corner. Yeah, most no, no, no. Forty-two-year-old fighters in a world title fight stand for twelve rounds like I did. I did. Do you know why I did? Because Andrew told me to, and I trust Andrew. So what Andrew explained to me was was gravity's at play when I'm standing up. When I'm sitting down, it's only half at play. So my recovery is cut in half. If I lie down, as I don't, you want <laughs> hopefully you won't be lying down in the ring, but you know what I mean. If you're lying down, then gravity's not at play. So it's quite logical, isn't it? It's, it, it, it is an incredible story. Um, can you give some idea of um, your, your previous, what, what, you know, how you were previously, your career, your boxing career? Uh, I think I, I had a quick look at your record. I think you were sort of, I think 26 wins and 6 defeats. What was it like before? And uh, and what what was the major difference before, perhaps when you weren't as successful, uh, to now that, that, that you know, you, you've won a world title? Well, just let me add this, though, just what I was speaking uh, prior about. If you're also, again, evidence-based, watch the video. From the first round to the last round, my body and my muscular... Um, my, my muscular sort of stamina and endurance didn't fatigue once. And that's, that's trust me when I say, that's that's some going. If you watch the fight, watch how relentless it was. And then bear in mind, I'm 42. And from the first round to the last, I was as muscularly fresh throughout. That makes sense as well? Yes, it does. I'm just turn my phone off, sorry. Okay. So I didn't fatigue muscularly once throughout the fight. That's something I've never experienced before. Uh, I've, I, 
my boxing career um all my fight career has been an uphill struggle for many different reasons i'm not going to go into it because it's, it's too long-winded but the point is is that with age and maturity but then finding clive the carve you put me onto andrew oh my god <laughs> like it's just become amazing and i've won a world title of 42 not to prove uh, not to prove anything to myself because I know what I am but I wanted to prove something about health and wellness and yes. inclined bed therapy that's what I wanted to prove to, to people and I, I wish it was on a bigger stage I really do and so, I so wish that but the story's not over yet no well absolutely I, I was, um, made contact with a friend today who I used to co-host his radio show with him a guy called Tom Barnes he does a radio show to uh, it's mainly American listeners. Uh, it goes out on a Saturday afternoon, and I know Tom said he'd love to speak to you if you get a chance. Brilliant, yeah. So, uh, that's True Frequency Radio over in the okay. States, and uh, Tom would be glad to speak to you. So, uh, you know, the, the, there's some alternative radio host. Yeah. This big thing about oh, so and so stole my guests, and, and really. We don't give a damn who interviews anybody so long as we get the word out, particularly something as important as what yourself and Andrew are, are talking about here. Sharing and caring, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. There, there was one thing, one thing that, that, that Tony did that he hasn't mentioned, and that is to drop his hands down. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a massively important. So and when, you, when you're back in the corner, is to have your hands down by your side and shake them as if you're washing your hands and shaking off the excess water. Again, that's that to put the power right. back, into the, back into the hands. I did listen, Andrew, because I did it. Have you watched the footage? I, did I, it I know you did it. Have you watched it, have you? I have indeed. You sneaky devil. I also <laughs> watched your original fights where you was orthodox boxing. yeah. yeah. And how quickly you fatigued, age 37. Oh, listen, listen, I've been fighting since the age of 13, so I understand how different it is now. Yes. Um, I, I did um, share the link in the chat room there about um, from Andrew's website where you gave the testimony of, of your, you gave a picture of your hands the night after the fight and how quickly they recovered. Um, Red Robin has just said, I wish Tony had before and after pictures of his hands on there. It looks like he only has pictures of what his hands look like after the fight. He doesn't have pictures of how fast the swelling decreased because of the inclined bed therapy. So maybe that's something you can do next time. Tony. No, actually, <laughs> actually he did it. I'm looking on my phone. I'm pretty sure I took photos of both. Yes, you did. I did, didn't I, Andrew? Yes, he's got a picture of himself and his kids in the hotel room. Yeah. No, at home. At home, sorry. After the hotel room. Right. And, sh and, his, ha and his hands are normal. Yeah, I'm going to show it. Um, that, that's something you could perhaps show on Andrew's website. I mean, we'll, we'll put all the links up um, when we post the podcast on our website, so people will be able to go and look at the, um, the links. There's the... Uh, the testimony on Andrew's website. Also, there's the. It's quite a good article about um, your achievement in the Guardian as well. I've been sharing that with quite a few people. Yeah, that went. That, that went. That was widely. That was widely read. That. Yeah. But you know what, Andrew? I did try. I. I, I always try. You know what? You know what I do? I, put, I try to get inclined bed therapy mentioned. But I yeah, know how yeah. the reporters work, Tony. The editor isn't down to me. You understand? I mention you at every opportunity. Yes. Yeah, I know. I read that article today as well, and uh, I noticed that y your name was there, Andrew. It was. Yeah, yeah. In what I think article? so. I'm sure you said uh, that, you th that you thanked Andrew K. Fletcher. In the Guardian article. Uh, well, maybe I'm. Uh, it might be a different one, but yeah. uh, I'm getting uh, cross purposes. But uh, it wasn't in the Guardian. I, I, I didn't, didn't, didn't go in the Guardian. Like... Yeah. Well, you're on Raconteurs News. That's even better. <laughs> it, it is. But what we need to what we need to do now is to get more boxers and and get more sports people involved in this. You know, to give our to give our Olympics team an edge over the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, what are they waiting for? Do you know recovery recovery is just I don't I don't get lactic acid build up anymore. Yeah, just as I predicted. 
You think this is better? Fantastic. Everything was better. So the, the the lactic acid is that burning feeling in your muscles, isn't it? When yeah. you eat tea, yeah. But the point I'm making is, Andy, is that I, when I when I train hard, I've trained immensely hard today. Mm-hmm. Now, sadly, I'll be sleeping in a flatbed tonight because I'm staying in my ladies. But when I'm in the incline bed, I won't notice any. I won't notice any soreness tomorrow. I might tomorrow because I'm sleeping in a flatbed. But mm-hmm. tomorrow, you know, when I get back in the incline bed, no soreness. What I recover, I recover overnight immediately. Yeah. Well, one thing we've noticed from our experiences, we we raised our bed. It must be getting on for probably even more than a year ago now, and there were some things that we didn't actually notice changing until we go away and forget to take the bed roses, which we did a few weeks back. And you sleep in a flat bed for a night or a couple of nights. And we stayed in a hotel, uh, lovely memory foam mattress and all that. But when we got up in the morning, we went to the bathroom. As you walk past the mirror, you, you glance in the mirror and think, who the hell is that in the mirror with the big swollen eyes and the puffy oh. face? <laughs> why, why, why something so logical that people just dismiss? It drives me insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were discussing this earlier on, where it, that people don't value things that are just they, that don't have any monetary value attached yeah, to. Yeah, I'm selling. Yeah, that's the way of the world. It's, it's sick, isn't it? Horrible. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's something like this. Um, I'm so pleased that Andrews uh, managed to get you on to come and talk to us because I I've, I've been expanding expanding this theory for what, 18 months or whatever it is since first with Andrew and tried it myself but I've only actually been telling sick people about it mm. now with your experiences Tony and your testimony we can now say it's not just good for sick people it, it's good for people who are well as well and, and they can find yeah, that's true well I, I reckon I reckon because we, we've seen these inclined beds come out of the Egyptian tombs and they must have worked bloody hard building those pyramids you know, dragging those pieces of stone up those yeah. up those ramps. Yeah, quite an amazing feat, really. And uh, even the workforce had mud mud beds, and those mud beds are still preserved. And every single one of them is inclined. You know, how did we miss something so logical? Do you know what, Andrew? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know if you sold the the, the concept of like sleep like an Egyptian to women, and the Kardashians? Left in these inclined beds, that would be it. It'd be, it'd be done. Job would be done. What are you saying about about? You can get away for free. Uh, I yeah. think sleep sleep like an Egyptian could be a good little catchphrase there. Seriously, because yeah. sadly it has got it's got the sales have got to be involved. If you don't if you don't if there isn't a sales pitch involved in this day and age, people are just until people are. This is what I'm finding when people are desperate. That's when they'll do it. That's when they'll try something because you've got nothing else to try. Mm. Yeah. So I, I've had people in my life, in my circle, who, who through desperation of not sleeping, of being kept awake by the baby's coughing, um, and so many, so many illustrations I can offer. But the point I'm making is, I'll then say to them, please just try this. I'll be going on at them, but I've just stopped going on at people now. I say, just let me do this for you. I just let's see, snoring, and can't sleep with my husband, he snores too much. Guaranteed overnight. It's changed, it's solved. That's it then, yeah. You got the evidence then, but you still look at it like you're nuts, but you just can't work out why it was so easy. <laughs> yeah, you're banging your head up against the wall all the time, but you know, that, that wall will come down sooner or later. But because the people like your opponent, Tony. Yeah, but you, you care about these people, so you can't stop trying. That's the problem. That's, yes. Well, it's yes, not a it problem, is. it's just something that I won't get. I, I just don't see a person no more. As Obviously, you've learned, Andrew, you've been doing a lot longer than me, but I'm just an advocate for you now. That's what I'm doing. Cheers, mate. Well, I, I, it's been it's been pretty easy for me to uh, to convince people to do it. And, and uh, I think everybody that I've met that's that I've told about it is doing it. Um, and it, but it's been pretty easy for me because the, just the difference in me, I were a skeleton with skin hanging off it, you know, just really? four months ago. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. 
What's your medical condition, Jason? Uh, I've got um, a con- I had a heart attack uh, early December last year. Uh, that was my second one. I've got a condition called antiphospholipid syndrome, which uh, it's really thick blood. But right. I, so I, I'm on blood thinners, and uh, so but I, I'd really been uh, I'd really been ill, and I really looked like a skeleton with just some grey skin all, uh, hung over it. That, and Jesus. people, uh, well. Uh, I worked my mother-in-law's uh, over the weekend, and I was trying to explain it to my mother-in-law and her husband, who's uh, obviously my father-in-law. He's he's just all he just kept saying was, "Just look at him. Just look at him. Just look at him. That that's all you need to see. Just look at him." You are that, the evidence. That's all we could say. You're the evidence, aren't you? Well, we we were so concerned about um, Jason's health because I mean you, you did look really ill and and like grey and the dark circles under your eyes. That particularly after the heart attack, it was more noticeable. But um, um, I mentioned at the start of the show, and uh, Martina came in to do, to bring me a, a cup of tea when I was talking to Jason on Skype after one of the shows. After only two weeks of inclining his bed, she went, "Oh my God!" Did a double take. Jason looks so well, he looks like he's been to Spain for a couple of weeks. Who convinced you to do it, Jason? How did you become involved? How did you get uh, convinced? Well, obviously, um, I, I... Sorry, I'm saying obviously when it's clearly in obvious because you don't know, but I, I hooked up with uh, Andy and Andy asked me to be co-presenter on here and he'd uh, he previously had Andrew on, on uh, when he was... Uh, on what we enemy enemy within weren't it? Yeah. And I'd I'd heard and I'd listened to uh, I'd listened to Andrew's uh, presentations and things like that. And I'd always thought to myself, it was always sort of like in the back of my mind, oh, I, you know, I'll I'll do it. <coughs> um, and then it was my wife uh, came home with some bed incliners from she was working as a warden uh, at a, a, a local old people's place and they've got these bed incliners in the wardrobe she says can I have them and they said yeah no problem so she's brought them and said we need to try this because she'd, she'd read about it she'd heard me talking about it and uh, posting things on Facebook about it and so she uh, said well we're going to try this and we tried it and, and for me it was instant the, the very next day I felt I felt I felt uh, like I were human again mm-hmm that's pretty good. And uh, Tony, we've got a question for you from the chat room, and this is from Red Robin. And Red Robin is asking, what exactly are the benefits that athletes like Tony receive from inclined bed therapy? Hello, do you answer that? Me answer it. Oh, do you want me to answer it? If you could, please, Tony. I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, so before inclined bed therapy, I'd be training intensely. I'd be waking up the next day uh, riddled with pain and soreness. Muscular soreness, I don't mean uh, joint soreness, muscular soreness. Injuries would last so much longer as you're getting older. The circulation, the blood flow is is less, I suppose. So lying flat doesn't allow for the, the blood to get to the area of damage or so doesn't recover as quick. I'm in, I'm in combat sports, I get a lot of damage. So that's a massively important part for me. It allows me to train more efficiently the next day. Allows me to put uh, more more intensity and effort in on a consistent basis, as I wouldn't be able to because I'd be so sore. So, uh, in terms of my respiratory system, the lung capacity uh, of 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 my inhalations of oxygen are better. Everything's better. I feel stronger. My uh, physicalities look look even better than than they did before it. In terms of like muscular density, and I'll take my top off if you want. I'm ripped, <laughs> I'm <messing. laughs> I'm, uh, but you know, I'm being serious. There's, there's so many benefits like um, aesthetic benefits to it, too. If you, you know, if you're that way inclined, if you want to, you, you do want to look physically well, it, it impacts on that. So, so many benefits that it's, it's I just feel great off it. And my sport, my sport and life has just improved dramatically. And it is the hardest game, boxing. Proven, well, fight sports, MMA, tie boxing, uh, boxing, all very uh, um, 
a very demanding sport. The yeah. only sports in the world where you have to train as hard as any other athlete, but then you have to endure the the physical punishment that other athletes don't endure. Mm. So it is proven that the fight sports are the toughest proven sports in the world for that reason. Other sports are very hard, very demanding. It's all the France, row and all that. But trust me, when you're in there for 12 rounds, going toe for toe, there ain't nothing that can beat that in terms of intensity and toughness and state of mind and mental pressure and all them things. So there you go. Does, does it help with the... Uh... You know, any facial injuries you might get during a fight, you know, you might get... Does it help with that? Everything, Jason. Any any swelling or any damage, even even damage to the bone. I got a crack rib. Would you believe I got a crack rib before that world title fight? So I went into that... I meant to say that before, by the way. I had a crack rib going in to a world title fight. Now, it happened 10 days pre prior to the fight. I was in a lot of pain. Honestly, a lot of pain. Wow. I did, couldn't spar again after that. that it, was, it happened in a sparring session. I couldn't spar after that. I just had to do uh, intensive training. But I couldn't even do the intensive training for like five days after the, the, the injury. It was too painful. So, but I do firmly believe that the incline bed therapy, I'm not saying it was all that. I've, I've got a very strong mental strength to, to take forward into, into what I do. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sculpted to adversity, I'd say, in terms of the things I've done, so I'm a tough, tough, tough competitor, tough-minded individual. But I, I definitely will say that the, the the incline bed therapy assisted the the site of the injury to to get us to a point where I could accept the pain before I went into the fight. Yeah, what well, one thing that that has been reported, and indeed I've noticed myself, is old scar tissue, and we're talking about scars that have been there for most of your life. Yeah, suddenly becomes smoother and less visible. And it, it takes a while for you to realise. You look. I mean, I've got um, quite a sizable. Well, did have quite a sizable scar on my leg, where I had a running with some barbed wire, and uh, it left a deep groove. That deep groove's all filled in. You know, it's it's just barely visible. Look at the four of us. Look at our skin. Not even joking. Yeah. Well, uh, how, how, how old you guys are, but um, you know, I, th I think our skin is, is showing. I'm, I'm sixty. I'm sixty this year. Yeah. Well, Listen, there's, there's aesthetic qualities, there's, there's vanity benefits to this as well. Your skin, your hair, your eyes, everything. And your sex life, according to Jason as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, listen, guys, it, this first hour has absolutely flown by. What we normally do at this time, we put on a quick tune to so we can uh, grab a drink or yeah. a quick comfort visit if we need it. And oh, we need to do the same. And... Uh, Managed to find a song for the break, which I thought was quite apt. It's called Positively Inclined. So we'll be back <laughs> four minutes, folks. <laughs> we'll be back with Tony Moran, Andrew Fletcher, myself and Jason. And welcome back to Raconteurs News this uh, wonderful Midsummer's Tuesday evening. Um uh, I'm Andy Young. I'm joined, as always, by Jason Holmes. And uh, this evening, we're absolutely delighted to welcome back Andrew Fletcher. And Andrew's been joined by Tony Moran, the WBF Cruiserweight Boxing World Champion. Welcome. Do you want to see the belt? Oh, yes, please, mate. Yes, please. I'm going to put me smoothie down, won't I? This is going to make good radio. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's. Um, I, I actually did a ninja show the other night. I was um, Jimmy called in and was talking to me, and we were actually discussing Linux, and he was showing me his setup and how it all worked on a screen share. I'm sure that made blinding radio. I've actually got two belts, but I'll just show you the world title one because I won. Oh. Since I met Andrew, I've won. I've won two titles. That's incredible. I won an international title before the world title. Uh huh. And uh, he's now getting his belt out, and there it is. Wow. Out of the bag. That's what you can win at 42 with the aid of inclined bed therapy. Wow. That is well, absolutely incredible. Many other reasons why I won it, but I'm telling you now, if it wasn't for my health and it wasn't for me and Andrew and Clive the Carl, they were the catalyst for that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. absolutely. 
I've and done it, all the hard work, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm being honest when I say, obviously my coach was a massive influence, but before I met that coach and before I found the energy and the uh, the will to do it again, mm-hmm. I, needed me, I needed me health back. I didn't have me health. I'm the, well, I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my life. I've always been fit, but I haven't always been healthy. Hmm. Yeah, well, Tony, I, from my involvement with motorcycle racing, I mean, them, them guys are jumping off the bike sometimes at 180 miles an hour and they get up and walk away. Uh, most people can't imagine what it's like to jump off the roof rack of their car at 70 miles an hour, never mind 180. Oof. And they've got incredible levels of fitness. But you were saying it's not all down to the inclined bed therapy. No, obviously not. You've got to train hard. You've got to work hard. You've got to have the right sort of mental discipline. But for any sportsman, if you can just get that slight edge, that's what makes the difference between the guys who make up the numbers and the guys who win the world championships, isn't it? Very accurate analysis, that, yeah. Yeah. So, any sportsman in my position... Not in my position, so that's the wrong way to put it. Any sportsman of any age should be doing this to get the edge. Mm-hmm. It'd be crazy not to. Something so free. You need, you need to design a, um, an inclined sport sort of recovery better thing. Yeah. Sell it, sell it for about five hundred pounds to a thousand. You probably sell millions of them. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sponsored by Raconteurs News. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't you? I just, I'm just, I'm just having a little dig that. Until, until you put a value on this this amazing thing, then people just just keep the blinkers on. I people will dismiss it. Yeah, you're right. Like you guys have been ill, but sickness doesn't sell, does it? No, I see. I mean, even though you you two are a prime examples of what inclined bed therapy can do for the ill person, sickness doesn't sell. So unlucky. No, that's it, and and that, that that's like I say again the. the, the the great advantage of having you on is, is saying, well, you don't have to be sick to use this. Because as soon as you mention therapy, people will think, oh, I'm not sick, I don't need therapy. Yeah. But um, if it's something that improves your life, and um, it, it's improved mine and Jason's, I know for a fact, beyond measure, and it certainly seems to have improved yours, Tony. Anyone out who's out there, I mean, I've got so many mates who've said to me, oh, yeah, I've got some bricks, I've got them all in a plastic bag, ready to put them in the bedroom, I just haven't got round to it yet. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Just, like, two-minute job. Just do it, and you, you'll you feel the benefits. It, some people it takes a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but for, for me and my other half, we felt the benefits straight away, but we did notice more and more benefits as time went on. I'm a personal trainer as well, besides doing the fighting. So all, all the clients that I, I've got, I try and encourage them to, with the health and the inclined bed therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, what, one client who had only known for one session, he was told me he suffered from an irritable bowel syndrome. Suffered from it for years, years. Suffered with it terribly. Couldn't go to the toilet for days at a time. One night of inclined bed therapy solved that problem. That person no longer has any any problem, any suffering. Wow. Why, why wouldn't you want to try this? Why, the evidence is so so irrefutable. Do I look like a liar? Do I not seem like an honest person? Do you know what I mean? People are listening to politicians. The politicians on the telly talk about the EU referendum. <laughs> you might every word that comes out of a politician's mouth, you might as well just believe it's a lie. But you look, people look at a man like Andrew K. Fletcher speaking, and you just you can't, you can't, you just can't be fail to see how how how, how such of a man of substance he is. You know what I mean? Why aren't people listening to the, the people like us? It's madness. Yeah. Yeah. Madness. Well, I've, I've known several people um, when we've had Andrew on previous shows that it's regularly posted in the chat box that, Andrew, you're truly a genius. Now, I know yeah. Andrew kind of blushes and brushes it off and says, no, I'm not. But the amount of people's lives that you've actually changed, um, if you're not a genius, you need to think of a better title. I think he's a genius too. And you know what? Knowing you, know you know what I love about Andrew, you know, you, when you tell him stories about how, how much inclined bed therapy helps someone, you see emotion, you see real deep emotion in his face. 
I suppose I love a bottom. Makes me a little bit emotional, eh? <laughs> All right. I mean, my, my, my dream, my ambition is to have uh, parents put the kids on an incline, the babies, you know, because there would be no more cot deaths. Now, I actually met uh, Dr. Shireen Chandler from the Foundation for Sudden Infant Death at her home in London. I was invited to go there. I took my little tubular experiments with me, explained all about the discovery, how it applies to the body, and why these babies shouldn't be been on a, on a flat bed. And she turned round to me, looked me in the face, and said, my God, you've solved it. And I said, what do you mean I've solved it? I've solved how water gets to the top of a tree. She said, no, you've solved sudden infant death syndrome. You know, that's... And I'm thinking, I've done enough. But nothing ever happened, you know. Lots of excuses. Oh, you need to get involved with the university before we can fund you. You try and get a university involved, they don't want to know. You know, they're not inventing here syndrome. So in the meantime, all of these kids are being put on uh, back there, back to back to sleep campaign, which means you um, position your child in a in a bed with its um, sleeping on its back. And now there's an epidemic of um, misshapen heads because the kids have all been in one position, so they've got like a flat back head syndrome. You know, alone, they, you know, you need to rotate in bed. And the same applies for us adults. You know, people have often asked me, oh, what's the best position to lie in? Your body will tell you. It'll tell you if you're uncomfortable. You'll need to turn over. Yeah? Listen to your body. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's an idea, Andrew, because um, uh, our regular listeners know... Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you, but um, myself and Tina became grandparents a few weeks ago. Now, um, we were talking to uh, Tina's daughter and, and she was saying, oh, you look so much better, Mum. What have you been doing? And because it, it was quite a troublesome pregnancy, we had told her all about what we were doing. Didn't want to kind of overload her brain with any more information. And when she told you, she went, Oh my God, why didn't you tell me about that? We're going to have to try that. I never even thought to say, well, put Ollie's bed on an incline as well. Yes. Yeah, them, them, them. them. I, I did find some, I found a couple of bits of evidence um, you know, during the research. Um, and there's a doctor in America, I forget, I forget what I found in the paper now, but he said he'd never had a single case of sudden infant death syndrome in the whole of his career. You know all the people that were under his under his uh, guidance, and he advised every single parent to put the child on an incline. You know, I actually yeah. found that, and I sent that into the Foundation for Sudden Infant Death, and they dutifully ignored that as well. Yeah. No money in it, though, is there, Andrew? Say again. There's no money in it for him. Oh, why he... not, Jason? Why would he? Why would he deny people that the understanding of of children? of that age, suffering like that? Well, if you've got no more sudden infant death syndromes, you don't need a foundation for sudden infant death syndrome. You know, and I suppose it's... people it's a, lose their jobs. It's a survival instinct, I suppose. Yes, and the man at the top who makes the decision whether to adopt such things or not is going to be the one on the biggest salary, probably 140, 150, 200,000 a year. He ain't going to want to lose his job, is he? If yeah, you don't go to the foundation, surely you go to people who would be interested in knowing this information. Like mother care. Oh no. Tried it. Yeah. I went everywhere with it. And and how are you going to prove it? The only way you can prove it is to advise mothers to to put the the kids on an incline. You know, I've I've had the argument that people have said, well. You know, your, your baby could slip down the bed because it's on an incline, could end up with its head down. Just get a pair of dad's boxer shorts, tie them to the side of the bed, yeah, to the side of the, the cot, right, both sides. Drop the baby inside the boxer shorts. It ain't going to budge. It ain't going to move anywhere. <laughs> Genius. Kids in boxer shorts, eh? Kids in dad's boxer yeah. shorts. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I I did notice. Um, it's it's not really affected me, but um, I have had reports from people saying that they wake up at the bottom of the bed, 
Um, does that does do, do you eventually sort of people who do that do they eventually grow out of it or? Yeah, it, it, again, you... it's the body. I think is 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 just it's just such such a shock to the system. You know, people think nothing's going to happen, but it does happen. And you know, perhaps they get a bit restless while they're fighting it, and but after a while, it just subsides. And you know, and I know what if you have to pull yourself up the bed a couple of times in the night, so what? You know, if you're going to get all them benefits, what the hell? Yeah, absolutely. But um, I remember something you did say for anyone who who is having difficulty with that. If they take the top sheet off their bed, put a, an old duvet underneath it, and that's put right. the top sheet back on, that little bit of give will stop them sliding out that's, of the bed. That's underneath. exactly right. That's that's yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, it, even the blanket, you know, if you put a blanket and wrap the blanket tightly around the mattress so it's tucked in either side and then put your bottom sheet back over the blanket, that extra bit of friction stops all the slipping. I think the problem really is that the mattresses are not actually designed to be inclined, are they? You know, we need to, to probably think about the design of a mattress. Um, we found that the best mattress to use so far has been a, a memory foam mattress. Because yeah, I've that, got a memory foam mattress. Yeah, it distributes the weight better and actually builds a little bit of a pocket for you to lie in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is probably why I don't find myself at the bottom of the bed. Yeah. Very often, I do sometimes, and uh, I did. I did notice that <laughs> I made I made the bed earlier on, um, and then when I went back in, it, the duvet had slipped <laughs> down the bed a bit so, off the bottom. So. Uh, yeah. I think I think that the you know the other thing is that people need to be aware of is it's probably not a good idea to wear underpants and underwear on an inclined bed because you get one hell of a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my testosterone levels haven't dropped. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not talking in a sexual nature. I'm talking in a, a combat nature. Right. So my testosterone levels seem just as high as they did when I was young. So, so what's next for you, Tony? I mean, where, where do you go from here? Where, what, what's the next step? Excuse me, I've got a bit of A for you, I need to sniff. <sighs> got no tissue. Excuse me, sorry about that. Oh, no. uh, I don't know. In terms of fighting, you mean, in terms of me sport? Yeah, in, in terms of fighting, in, in, in terms of your future as well. I mean, things are obviously looking up a lot better than, than, than they have been. So, um, what, what, what's, what's your ambitions? I've what's your goals? Shitty, I've had a shitty few years ago it's just just through the mere um problem of divorce so i'm starting to rebuild my life to the point where i'm enjoying life again now because obviously i need a home i need a new home and a new partner and stuff so things are on the up but fundamentally i need to inc i need to be providing for the three children that i've got i need to be providing for the partner that i'm going to be living with soon so i need to be in a living now unless i get offered decent money for taking nine weeks of my life out to, to go and fight again then it needs to be a good payday otherwise I'm, I'm trying to build a business and I'm doing very well in terms of building the business as a PT so I can't just if I put all that aside I'm going to lose all my clients when I just start it do you know what I mean mm. I've, I, need, I need at this moment of time to be earning a living now I've won the world title I'm happy with that there's much more I could do but not at this moment in time I need to put that on the back burner my my ultimate aim at the moment is just to get a home with my partner, be settled, have my business running well, and then look at maybe fighting again. But you know what? You know, 43 in a, in a month, I, I believe I can go on for many more years. I really do. I'm better. I am genuinely better now as a fighter than I have been at any other point in my life in all manner of ways. So... That's just put a thought into my head, Tony. I'm just thinking, do you know what, what is the oldest ever boxing world champion? I'm not sure. I know Bernard Hopkins is a, is a, is a, a wonderful sort of example. Because he, he is, I mean, he's beyond me in terms of boxing level by what he's achieved. But as purely as a, as a, as a purest boxer, he's achieved so much. But he's, a, he's an amazing man. He was going on to like he was late 40s. And he's, a, he's an ex example of of just how how amazing you can be at, at a late age because you know we're all told that age is is restricted, aren't we? 
Mm-hmm. Footballers, no, footballers could probably go on longer with these stuff because we're all, we're all conditioned to believe that you can't do things past a certain age. Conditioning. That's all it is, mental conditioning. Mm. Look, at, do you know a guy called Wim Hof? No. I know, yeah. no. You haven't checked Wim Hof out? Oh, my God, he's amazing. Most unique human being on the planet is Wim Hof. He's a man in his 50s. He, he's doing feats of endurance and, and stamina and just the craziest thing you could is ever this imagine. The ice, is this the Ice Man? Ice Man Wim Hof. He's an amazing. He's the yes, most. We were talking about him earlier, Tony. Yeah. So the most. Him before he came on, Tony. The most unique human being on the planet, and that's proven by science. Yes, but have you noticed, Tony, with your new understanding of posture, how he uses posture to maintain his body temperature? Oh yeah, no, Pay no, attention. Doubt no doubt about that man knows how the body works. He knows how to get the best out of the body, so I'm pretty sure he's definitely onto these um these elements of, of, of gravity, how gravity works with your breathing. But um do you know what? It's just just great. It's great to be part of this community to be honest with you. This was this was something alien to me two years ago. Mm. I would never have imagined I'd be sitting on a podcast. Talking to a, a genius scientist. Get off. No, <laughs> Excuse what, me, but I'm not a scientist. Uh, <laughs> what, what am I, I, yeah. I? I was as trapped in the condition of, of brainwashed world as anyone. You know, I was just. I wasn't a, I've always been a good guy, but I, you know, I was lost in lost in my own ego of the fight sports and all the nonsense that inner city life entails and all the influences that we have. And I, I was lost. I was just lost as anyone. Two years ago, I found I found me help, and I found Andrew, and I found people like yourselves, and you know what? Blows in in the way that I've ever experienced before. Thank but, you. but people like us come across as too boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone you, looks at us. When like. you got a belt like that, Tony, you're not boring at all, mate. You know yeah. My, I'm, I, in in the way I've just been talking about in that false shallow existence that, that I've lived for 40 years until I found these things that I can now carry on giving evidence though, but from a different viewpoint, if that makes sense. Yes. Because I, I still influence people in that world, I suppose, because of what I've achieved as a fighter, I think. So it's hopefully, hopefully. We had a little bit of a chat with Mark who came down with you to meet me. You know, that was a great day for me, by the way. Yeah, really, Mark, enjoy, really enjoyed you guys coming down to meet me. Has Mark been on this, this podcast tonight? No, he hasn't. No, but Mark, oh, Mark... He'd be a great fella to have on. Mark, he, he's, yeah, he would, yeah. He, but, Mark, yeah, sorry, go on. Mark, Mark's going to try and get a... We were talking about a famous football team that the, the, has the colour red. And yeah. uh, Mark was going to try and get them... Uh, or try and talk to the manager, or even the trainer, to uh, to get the uh, incline bed implemented there. Has there been any any development with that yet? Sorry, I'm trying to think that Yeah, what, what it is with Mark is that he's he's a, he's, a, he's a good guy, but he's got a lot of influence in terms of the world he's in. He's in the music world, he's in the fashion world and stuff. But he, he's a good friend and he's a believer, as you can tell. I I I basically just tell anyone I care about, about Clive and Andrew, and then I let them make their own decision now. But Mark, Mark was in, um, interested in meeting both of them. Because he's had the benefits that I have had, so he's a good guy. He wants to he wants to spread the word. He wants to help. So people like Mark on board are good. The good influencers. They know how to sell. They know about branding. They know about you know he's, he's got a very successful business and he knows how to, he knows how to run businesses. So people like that are on board are, are massively helpful as well. Mm-hmm. Because one, they're doing it out the goodness of the heart. Two, to doing it just to, to give something back to people like yourself, Andrew, and Clive, you know what I mean? So, more people like us are involved, more good guys, sharing and caring and, and showing a bit of love to humanity then. Yes. All good S- same with Andy and Jason here, you know. Yeah, of course, not, not least you guys, I was just that I don't know you well enough to yeah. comment, but, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just giving an example. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're, all, we're, all, we're all on the same, on the same path, I suppose, and... Mm-hmm. We're all trying to uh, just spread the word because it's a good word to spread. Oh, but that's funny enough. Get, get, listen to this one. Mark starting a newspaper called The Word. Okay. 
So it'd be good for you guys if you cut with him because maybe you can do your own your own section or something. I don't know. That's a speech of Mark because I have got no the full runners of it, but that'd be that'd, interesting. That'd be another great opportunity. To spread the yeah. word. Yeah, we'd love to speak to Mark. He sounds like the, the sort of person uh, that, that we're always striving to speak to. I mean, we're getting people from all over the world joining us. Um, a couple of months ago, we had Max Egan from uh, Peru. Uh, we had Zen Gardner talking to us from Uruguay. Um, we Last week, we had um, the global legend that is Rick Simpson talking to us from Croatia. And next month, we've got a guy called uh, Steve Smith, who's joining us from Colorado. And he treats pets with CBD, cannabis oil. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been seeing a lot of results for people with that as well. Ah, well, got news for you there, Tony. And if you want to try it, mate, we've started making our own. So uh, if you want a bottle to try, drop me your address when we finish the show, and I'll send you a bottle over to try uh, has yours got the THC taken out of it? There is no THC in it, yeah. Because the, the THC makes you, is the one that gets you high, but it also yeah. has other benefits. Obviously, for what you're doing, um, it might be a bit of a problem. Um, but um, Rick Simpson's oil is the one with THC. That's the one that um, we'd recommend to anyone taking who's got cancer. Um, because we, we've, um, most of us have seen the film Run From The Cure and the, the healing effects, not just for cancer, but, but for other things as well, is incredible. Um, but we've actually got another question from Red Robin. They've thrown some brilliant questions in there. I um, hope you'll come back and join us regularly on Raconteurs News because uh, some great questions. Uh, they're saying that they've just watched the movie Vaxxed and was curious. Have there been any reports of inclined bed therapy helping individuals with autism, Andrew? Uh, it's not a condition that I've, I've looked into, to be honest. Um, guilty as charged, you know. To, I mean, the, 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 uh, the avenues that I've chosen has been predominantly multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, um, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injury, complete spinal cord injury. Uh, psoriatic arthritis, and you know, there's 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 lots of other conditions. The um, um, uh, what was that sh shoulder problem that Tina had? The, the oh it, t yeah, Tina had, uh, has fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's done wonders to help with that. Yeah. Yeah. So so unfortunately, I haven't. I, I you know, I would love to investigate every condition there is. Mm. But I just just don't have the the time or the capacity to do it. Yeah, you're just one man. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm, it'd be interesting to, to see what whether that does help. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, there's been some positive results on autism with the CBD oil, actually. And uh, that's something uh, we, we're looking into the ins and outs of it and the possible legal implications but um, myself and Super Kev who books the guest on we we've, we've done a few extractions now and we've made some oil we've made some salve to to rub into you wherever it hurts and uh, it's very effective it, the stuff we're making at home actually seems to be more effective than the stuff we've bought online that seems to be that's supposed to be stronger so if we can do it um, without causing too many waves, then that's something we'll be looking at selling. It might be on the RN site, or perhaps we'll have a, a separate website and link to that. But Or oh, they can meet us back at library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people are in Liverpool, they'll sell it for you. <laughs> I, I, listen, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, yeah. What... Uh, the, I, I was speaking. I went and met up with Tony Farrell in Sheffield a couple few weeks ago, um, and while we were, while I was just having a brief meeting with him before he came on our on our show, um, it, he got a friend with him, and I I was uh, telling Tony about inclined bed therapy, 
And the guy who was with him, his friend, his, his mate said, "Ah, oh, I've done, I've been doing that. Uh, I read it in, and he said a magazine. So there's, there's been quite a big article in a magazine as, as but that been the Nexus magazine. The Nexus magazine, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, they did a four-page spread on it. Very good, very good article. There's uh, another article coming out shortly in New Pathways magazine, which is a uh, a multiple sclerosis magazine. So this is a follow-up article. Yeah, from one that went out in 2010. So we get we're getting coverage. Yeah, and it, it's reaching it's reaching the parts that uh, broadsheets and you know and um, and the um, the gutter press can't reach. Yeah. But it was the first time that I'd ever come across anybody that when I'd mentioned it knew what I was talking about, but I'd not been the one that told them about it. If you know what I mean, or, yeah. or it wasn't somebody who told me. You know, it was it, it, that was quite interesting that that there are people out there that, it, that it's this this information is reaching. Yes, there are. Well, thanks to you guys as well. You know, because the Nexus magazine came about because of um, interviews on radios. <laughs> Ironic, ironically, so yeah, it, it, it's it's a snowball. You need the PR agents, Andrew. Yeah. Sure, I'm not even joking. I'm half. I'm only half joking when I say that. Seriously, though, the, these people who do those jobs, they know how to get stuff branded, and they know how to get stuff. Yeah, indeed. In, in consciousness and in awareness, and maybe I'm, I'm. I've got a few people now who I'm working with as personal training clients who are in those worlds, and I've I've asked them to to the incline the beds, and they have, and they're getting results. So hopefully the next question to them will be, well, do you think there's something worth backing in terms of, of mm. PR? You know, it's, yeah. it is all about the it is all about the sales, isn't it? Not the sales as in terms of monetary sales, in terms of selling, selling you know, the idea, selling the idea and the wonders of it. And you only need that one door open and it'll kick off. One person, one door open, and that could be that could be all all that's needed. Mm. I'm just going to put my light on because I'm, I'm looking at my picture there. It's getting a bit dark. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. what, what, what time are you running this till, guys? Oh, we've got about 20 minutes left, haven't we? Uh... Well, we, we normally um, cut off after two hours, but um, if you want to run a bit over that, we've, we've got a full third hour we can go into, so um, we're quite happy to keep going. I, I don't know if I'm asking that because I haven't eaten all day and I'll be happy to finish at 10 if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be, that'd be idea. Just that's that my right. missus have just, just sent me a text from down the stairs asking what I want for me tea. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get me order in now, I'm not going to get nothing. Yeah, so come on, what's a world champion having for his supper, Tony? Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm vegetarian now, which is again something I would never have believed I was going to. Uh, what I wouldn't have ever believed went down this path. But anyway, the, the best way I can explain is two years ago when I found my health. I realised that I wasn't going to change overnight, so I just I've done the drip drip effect, and on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, I just gradually changed all my habits. So where I'm now, just a, an elixir of youth, uh, elixir of health. Sorry, having a having a drink and eat, I would just say is healthy. I don't put badness in my body anymore. I've got full, uh, I've got full choice over the food that I put in my body. And it doesn't be, it doesn't come at any any cost of willpower if that makes sense. Your body's just changed. I've just a, I've got a naturally healthy body that just desires goodness, doesn't desire sugar, doesn't desire junk food. I don't even get it for my kids anymore. I've retra I'm retraining my kids too. That's the be that's the most beautiful thing for me. I'm giving so my kebab and chips then. No, I still give them occasional. I'm not gonna I'm gonna just become like a monk who's just not gonna give them anything for. I have reduced, I've re I don't get them fast food no more, apart from a pizza. Good on you, mate. I've stopped them eating those American sweets with all the colours in. And I'm, but I'm educating them as to why. I'm not just saying to them you're not having it. I'm, we sit down, have discussions and education and have fun about it as well. And you, don't, you know what? Kids, kids don't mind. I think, I think one, of the, one of the best things I did for my granddaughters was to, to educate them on growing their own food. You know, because we've got our own organic garden, yeah? Yeah. Um, so we taught them, you know, this is where the food comes from, and consequently, they love vegetables. Yeah, but it's the quality of those vegetables that's yeah, of important. Course. Yeah. 
because they're organic grown in your own soil. Yes. What are you two like on your health, Andy and Jason? Um, well, for me, um, I I, um, I tried to go along with my partner when she she went for the um, some people call it no carbs. Dr. Sarah Mayer, who came on with us a, a while back, calls it ketogenic diet, and to be honest, I kind ketogenic. Of that. Sorry, ketogenic. Sorry? Ketonogenic, ketonogenic. Oh, Sorry. And and I, I'm not following it 100%, but my partner does. It's improved her health. And that that's just basically doing away with all carbohydrates from your diet. So right. you can eat as much um, meat and vegetables as you want. Just don't eat sugar, potatoes, pasta, stuff like that. And I was really surprised. I thought, oh, my God, no potatoes, no bread. I'm going to really miss that. But uh, when we got started on that, and uh, we, we just used to have some meat and vegetables uh, as a main meal, and you can eat as many vegetables as you like, and you eat as much meat as you like as well. And uh, you don't miss it. I mean, uh, the only time I ever eat bread, we, we never have bread in the house, the only time I eat bread is if I go away and there's nothing to eat but a bacon sandwich or something like that. I'll eat it. And, the, the, you know, the odd bit here and there is not a problem. It's, it's when you live day to day on those sorts of things. Andy, I'm going to retrain you on your health. Only I'm going to, I'm going to, I, can, I can offer you some really good guidelines off, off air, do you know? Oh, yeah. That'd, I think it'd benefit you. You need to cut the bacon out, mate. Cut the bacon out. Yeah, I think so. Ah, right. I'll show you some pictures as to why. On, on, on a <laughs> I'm only joke. But now you know what. Do whatever as you wish. But there's there's a there's a fundamental rule that there's 91 essential minerals, vitamins, amino acids, and essential fatty acids that our bodies require on a daily basis. Yeah. To be well, for the immunity to be well, for your mind to be well. For everything to be well. So if you're putting those 91 essential minerals and vitamins in on a daily basis and then sleeping in an inclined bed, woo, <laughs> you're going to be abundant, boy. I'm telling you. Sky's the limit, yeah. I'm telling you. That's, what I do. That, that's my living philosophy now, and I'm abundant because of it. Mm. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. Excellent. Well, um, to be fair, you did ask us both the question, so um, Jason, it's your turn to answer now. About my diet, well, I, I'm coming from a place where I've not really eaten anything for like six months, really, and that, nothing. So what I'm eating at the what I'm doing at the moment is, if I feel like eating something, I'm eating, I'm eating, and, and it doesn't matter what it is. But I, I do have a, a a pretty good diet, so we do eat a lot of uh, fresh vegetables, things like that. We don't eat a lot of fatty foods. We do occasionally. I do like a bacon sandwich, and I know uh, Tony's not going to really approve of that. But um, I I'm do. I'm joking. <laughs> I do uh, like the odd occasional sam uh, sandwich. But like I say, I'm in a situation where uh, just seeing me eat is just is is good enough for for you know for my wife and things like that, and, and yeah, just being able to eat and having a, a full stomach. So. Of course. My my my. We, but I remember a time when we were having his kitchen done a couple of years ago. Uh, and we were on takeaways for all week because we'd got, got the, nothing, we, we'd got no kitchen. It would be completely rebuilt. Uh, and by the end of it, your body's craving some vegetables, isn't it? It's yeah. like... Craving goodness. You've, you've yeah. got to listen to your body. You've got to listen to it. And it's it's craving vegetables. And, and just think about it. It never really craves a, a kebab. Or it never really craves, you know. You just perhaps fancy a kebab or a pizza or something like that. But yeah, but we don't know, eat. We don't eat for. We, we shouldn't eat for taste. Should we? Well, we should. But we should. We should eat for nutrition. We don't eat for that that sugary, salty, fatty taste, do we? That's not what we're our. Well, our bodies crave energy and crave nutrition. But we're being conditioned to buy so many things that don't even contain food to to solve that. Food most, like most, most food contain it doesn't not contain food. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just I don't know. It's, it's each to their own. I'm not trying to get on a soapbox, but I'm telling you now, 
look up, look after your diet and get your bed inclined. And it's, it's about balance as well, isn't it? Life will change. Yeah, eighty twenty rules a good rule, isn't it? It, it? I mean, if you're if you're a boxer, I mean, the nutrition and all the stuff. I mean, you're into keeping fit and. Uh, nah, doing doing nah. your exercise and all that sort of thing. So that nutrition thing is really important. But oh. it's about balance. I mean, I can't walk very far. So, uh, you know, I, I can't do all that exercise. So I have to sort of balance out what I what I can, uh, you know, what I can and can't eat. That has the walking changed at all, Chase? Uh, it's, now, well, it did for a, for a couple of days. But no, it it's sort of seems to have regressed a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I'm expected. I've, I've expected that the uh, it, it, it's not been it's not been right for well for three years now. It's nearly three years since I've had this blood clot in this leg. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. What about if you just overwhelmed your body with health? in terms of what you put on in your mouth and what was going inside your body. Would, do you think that other could have any effect on, on the illness that you, you've got? Well, I, <clears throat> look, anything that would help, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you get the... I, I, you know, I feel so well at the moment that I don't... I feel like I, I should be counting my blessings and not rather, you know, trying to push myself to towards something that might make me feel a bit different in another way. If I change my diet too much, I might start having problems with me, you know. Yeah, here's the, the key to it, though. You don't have to change nothing. You just have to add a few a few choice um, supplements, mineral salts, vitamins. That's all you got to do. Just add to what you're already doing. So you add you the, see, I, I've also got to be careful with things like that because... I have to, I'm on warfarin and my uh, my blood has to be two and a half times thinner than yours. So and it has to be monitored as well. And there are these supplements and things like that can have an effect on your INR. Min um, minerals and vitamins, you mean? Sorry. Do you mean minerals and vitamins can have an effect? Yeah, yeah, on your INR. Yeah, definitely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah they, they can have an effect on your on your your INR. And if sometimes my blood went to uh, six point five one time, which was like six and a half times thinner than than a normal person's blood, uh, and it were really quite scary. And it was it was simply because uh, I'd I'd taken something that I I shouldn't have taken, that I'd had something that I shouldn't have had. It, it, I think it was sort of broccoli or something ridiculous. Really, yeah. Vit oh, vitamin K. K, yeah. Yeah, vitamin K, yeah. Yeah. Have you had Clive the Carl on this show? We had Clive on uh, way back, yeah, but we've had him on, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, because he, he'd answered a few of those questions. Uh, Besides what, what you're getting from the, uh, from the bed therapy, maybe with the nutritional side as well, that could have a double effect. I find it's had a double effect for me, anyway. Yeah. But obviously I'm not suffering from any illnesses, and I'm open to prevent them by carrying this on mm. well it, yeah for, for me my major health problem is I fell off a house when I was 19 years old and uh, got compression fractures in his spine uh, so um, I, I managed to get fairly fit again I got fit enough to join the army and the marines although they didn't want me, thank goodness um, I, I, I drove a truck for 22 years long distance before I had to pack up and now it is it's just the slowing down with age and the fact that the the, the the crushed spine is 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 causing me problems. But that's kind of been alleviating quite a lot. But with Andrew's help, and also the fact we've discovered this um, CBD oil, and I know for a fact if I could get hold of some proper Rick Simpson oil. I could be completely pain free in a matter of about 10 or 15 minutes. I've, I've actually managed to get some to try once and just a grain of rice sized piece on the end of my finger, took it like that, 10 minutes later, no pain. Why can't you get it regular? Um, because it's, it's um, legally in the same class as heroin. Serious? Yeah. Why? It, well, I, I would imagine because of the curative powers that it has. Oh, you're not allowed to say cure, are you? Because of the healing powers that it has. And uh, it makes people well from all kinds of things, which cost thousands of dollars to, to just throw drugs at. And it, it's, oh, yeah, it's all conspiracy, isn't it? Mm. You've got to fight the good fight, haven't you? 
Mm. Once you once you wake up, which I'm fine with with friends and stuff. Once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. No, oh, absolutely. On, on your health, on all you know, whatever. I've I've left all the conspiracy. I'm not. The reason I got into me health because the conspiracy stuff was driving me insane. Yeah. I was lying there with my three children, thinking, how how can, how can this world be so twisted and what whatever, whatever? Anyway, I'm not going to go on. But the point yeah. I'm making is, I thought. I've got to do something that's positive. I'm positive is health, I'm fine, and, and giving other people the health, and, and, and passing it on, and I'm, I'm passionate about it now, and I'm, I'm loving it. And we're very nearly there, so I'd like to say a massive thank you from myself and all our listeners to Tony Moran for joining us tonight, and to Andrew Fletcher, the man who made it all possible. And um, just... You guys are absolutely amazing, and uh, anything I can learn from you, Tony, I'd be more than happy to learn it. Where do you live, Andy? Me, I live at Boston, over on the East Coast. Right, okay. Me, me and Mark Bell will be due a visit to you soon. We, we love going on our little uh, health road trips. Where, about, where are you, Jason, in Sheffield? I'll tell you what, you can meet at our house. It's about uh, halfway between. Yeah, that's that's right, bang in the middle. We're doing little, we're doing little health road shows, me and Mark. So we're there. Uh, and Mark just, will be a good guy to have on on your show, I think. Just a just a little, uh, just a little side thing. Uh, I've just had a little message from Heath. Uh, uh, by the way, happy birthday, Heath, for tomorrow. Happy birthday, um, happy trongrants to you. Uh, uh, but he said, uh, great show. Um, is he is he voting uh, remain or leave? <laughs> Is who voting remain or leave? Well, we'll, we'll put that out to both of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm voting leave. I'm a leave type of guy. I I think I've got a I've got a bit of a hunch that if this they fix this, then um, th there'll be a revolution because it, it it's so obvious that everybody's voting. I, I don't know anybody that's voting remain. Don't know anybody. No. Well, but that's for another show, I think. That absolutely is, and uh, thanks everyone for listening tonight, and thanks for all the wonderful questions from the chat room. Uh, great to see some new faces in there, and we'll be back for a, a one-off special tomorrow night, um, because we couldn't do a, an update last month with Paul, our high-level financial insider, so we've said we'll do one with him tomorrow night. That'll be on at 8 o'clock on raconteursnews.com. And then Thursday night, we've got a return visit from author John Hamer, and he'll be talking about his new book that's out. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about that one, because we'll be covering the banking industry, one of our oh. subjects. So with that, I'll say thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Jason, as always. Cheers. And um, thank you to everyone for listening, because if it weren't for you, we'd just be off and away to ourselves <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow night and uh, wish you all a good evening Yeah, please give us your feedback if you're trying to incline bed therapy we need your feedback most okay. important Yeah, please do that and uh, anyone who listens to this you can uh, contact Andrew through his Facebook page or uh, his incline bed therapy Facebook group or on his website at www.inclinedbedtherapy.com and uh, you can leave testimonials on there so that other people can share your experiences. Nice one, and Hey, Tony. Respect, big man. Yes, sir, and you always you know that. Much love, sir. Right, okay. hey, fellas, it's been, a, it's been an honour. I'll uh, hopefully speak to you again in the future, privately or publicly. It doesn't matter to me. That would be great, Tony. I look. It'd be nice to meet you, meet you in person as well, Jason. Andy, that'd be good. You enjoy your dinner. We'll meet up soon again. Uh, I you. hope. And uh, we've got another song to play out with. And what's this one? This one, not quite as appropriate as the last one. This one's called "Raise Your Head." Uh, <laughs> thanks and good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. There we go. Raise your head. That went well, off. Well, yeah. I think that was that was very nice. It was uh, they covered a lot of subjects. Yeah. I think Tony's edge is just amazing. You know. Yeah, you've done a great service there, Tony. 
Yeah. As many times as you want me to, mate, I'll do it. Oh, I yeah. really appreciate that, mate. That, and you, Andy and Jace, yeah. Fantastic, mate. Yeah, br- brilliant. Great show. I mean, I know Andy's been looking forward to it. He's been like sending me messages all day. He's, he, 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 like yesterday and day before, and he's been he's been like a kid at Christmas. So yeah. I know he's going to have enjoyed it. So uh, at least watching him is, is, has been, been great. 